Hi there. This is my second video on how to create a Conlang writing system. Broadly speaking, humans have evolved five different categories of writing systems. Logographies, abjads, abugidas, syllabaries, and alphabet. Logography, or logosyllabary, evolved from pictograms, basically, and turned into an actual writing system. Uh, a logography has glyphs that combine both semantic and phonetic symbols to represent both the sound and the meaning. So there will be a shape that indicates, say, a fish hook, and there will be a phonetic element that tells you vaguely how that may be pronounced. It, it, it hints at it. And the combination of those two elements together gives you the glyph for fishing, say. Uh, there could be a huge number of signs in logography. Uh, Chinese has thousands and thousands of them that uh, the average reader is expected to, to recognize and be able to reproduce. The best examples are uh, Chinese, uh, Egyptian hieroglyphics, and Mayan glyphs. Abjads are consonant alphabets and have individual letters for the consonants and they may indicate some of the vowels using consonant letters or with diacritics. Best known examples are uh, Arabic and Hebrew. Often the vowel diacritics are only used for religious texts where getting the pronunciation is very important and children's books where learning the pronunciation is very important. In the example on screen here, the top one is Arabic and the little marks that you can see over top of the basic glyphs indicate the vowels. In the bottom one, that's Hebrew, and there are no vowel markings there at all, uh, although they do exist for Hebrew. The Abu Gida is a syllabic alphabet, also called a, an alpha syllabary. It's a writing system in which the main element is a syllable. Syllables are built up of consonants, each of which has an inherent vowel, and then diacritic symbols are used to change or mute the inherent vowel, and there's separate forms for when a vowel appears at the start of a word. Uh, the best known example would be Devanagari, used to write Hindi. The syllabary uses symbols to represent syllables, much like uh, an abugida, but each symbol is completely different based on the particular syllable and isn't generally modified. Uh, so it's a syllable consisting of a consonant plus a vowel or just a vowel. The best known example would be Japanese hiragana, Cherokee, or say uh, Canadian Aboriginal syllabics. And the last type is of course the alphabet, where each symbol represents a consonant or a vowel. In some alphabets, combinations of letters are used to represent a phoneme. In others, a particular glyph might represent a variety of phonemes. The writing system that you choose to develop for your conlang is going to be heavily dependent on the phonology and the syllable structure of the language you design. You want to have those established before you start on creating a writing system, or you're going to end up revising it way too much. Trust me, I've, I've done this. So uh, we'll look at syllable structure next. In linguistics, a syllable consists of an onset followed by a rhyme, and the rhyme is broken down into two subcategories, the nucleus and the coda. Basically, the onset is a consonant at the start of a syllable. The nucleus is the vowel in the syllable, and the coda is whatever comes after the vowel. For the English word cat, C is the onset, A is the nucleus, 
And the final T is the coda. It gets more complex than that, uh, but that's the basics of it. If you look at, at Chinese uh, languages like Mandarin, it has a different system. Same thing with Japanese. They have a system based on moras instead of uh, syllables. Uh, Chinese has the added factor of having tones attached to uh, words. But the, the basics are there. Now, at the bottom of that diagram, you'll see uh, the CVC drawing there. That is a pretty common way to work out the details. So when a symbol is in a pair of brackets, it's optional. So you can see in that particular instance there, a syllable for that language that this is describing would have to have a vowel. It can optionally have a consonant before that vowel. It can optionally have a vowel after the first vowel. And it can optionally have a consonant at the end. So a syllable might consist of consonant vowel, 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 consonant, or vowel, vowel, consonant, or the whole long thing there, consonant, vowel, vowel, consonant. Establishing those sort of rules for your language is going to make determining the writing system and how it functions uh, much easier. Now, it's worth noting that there, this, this is a simplification. Uh, there are instances where uh, you can have a consonant cluster, two consonants together, but the second one can only be a glide, or only certain consonant clusters are permitted. And you really want to define those, too, before you decide on how to create your writing system. There's also some other factors you may want to consider. Your language may have inherited or adapted a writing system from another language, and therefore, the glyphs that are present in that original writing system are not adequate for your constructed language. Usually what happens in cases like that is you have different spelling conventions to represent sounds that are missing or the addition of diacritics. Uh, this can be seen with the use of the Latin alphabet throughout much of Europe, where Latin had a certain inventory of sounds and therefore glyphs for them, but the languages that uh, employ the Latin alphabet had additional sounds, and their solution was either to come up with specific spelling uh, conventions or to add diacritics to mark the extra sounds. It may have evolved over time. Your writing system may preserve uh, an earlier version of your language and have some symbols that are redundant uh, or it may have lost symbols. There may be symbols that are there and they disappeared over time. You have to consider the technology level of uh, the people who speak your language. If it's a more primitive culture, if it's sort of medieval era or something like that, then the type of writing system is going to reflect the technology that they had at the time. And uh, you need to keep that in mind. You need to consider the medium that uh, was used. So uh, ancient Egyptian was carved on walls and painted on walls. And that's the, that's the way the hieroglyphics started out. Over time, when they uh, started recording things on papyrus and they wanted to do it more efficiently, they developed further modifications of the original hieroglyphic systems uh, called uh, hieratic and demotic. And they were a, a way to let scribes write things a lot faster and more efficiently. And they were based on the earlier symbols. And lastly, of course, you need to decide if you are making an art lang uh, or a nat lang or naturalistic language. So an art lang, you're creating something just for the joy of creating it. You can use any writing system you want. It can be entirely accurate to the language, one glyph per sound or however you're doing it. And 
the rules don't really apply for an art lang in the same way. If you're trying to make a naturalistic language, one that could have evolved on a uh, human culture somewhere on earth, then you need to consider the factors that I've just mentioned there uh, when coming up with the writing system that you want to use. Hopefully that quick overview of writing systems will help you decide what type of writing system you want to create for your conlang. The next video is going to deal with romanization.